my clock we're at appropriate time so this is me i'm at a cool house here <laughs> so i put the agenda together we're flexible so if anyone chats anything or it's i don't know if people are allowed to talk i'm not sure how that goes but it, we're we do a meetup together so we're very uh interactive so feel free to interrupt us you know this is uh time for everyone to learn about the projects, how they work together, and a really cool use case of how you can very easily move data from any relational database and push it into HDFS, push it into Kudu, push it into Hive, really straightforward. Uh, we run the Future Data Meetup in Princeton, and we uh, work with Philly and New York and Boston and another one in Providence. But uh, tonight we're doing a meetup on some of the streaming uh, Apache projects. It's going to be pretty much an open forum, a couple people discussing things. We'll dive deeper into this demo, some other demos, give people an idea how to work with the uh, projects together and you know share out all the uh, source codes. You can do it yourself. These are some of the projects we cover. Uh, we'll, we can post the link in there. I post it in the general events section for the uh, meetup tonight. So it looks like Tim froze a little bit. So this is me. Uh, my name is John Kuchmek. I'm actually a senior solutions engineer uh, out of South Jersey. South Jersey. Tim, you, fr you froze. You froze a little, buddy. So, oh, did I? Yeah. Am I okay now? Yeah, you're good. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't uh, screen, uh, do myself twice here. We'll see. If that slows me down, we'll get rid of that. Just let me know. So Kudu, we'll walk through that. It's a pretty common use case. Sometimes you don't want to just grab it from a, a database. Sometimes you're going to grab it from files. Very easy to take whatever kind of file it is, do whatever processing with Apache NiFi, maybe send it through Kafka got a couple of ways to do that. It's very straightforward. All you really need to have for these uh, services is the basic knowledge of where your data is, you know, what tables you want, those sort of things. I've got an article here grabbing stuff from a Maria database and pushing into Kudu. It's very straightforward with the newest versions of NiFi, make it really easy to work with records. But I think that uh, makes things easy. Just get through a couple of these. Uh, one thing that's helpful and very thankful to another Apache project called Apache Calcite is within NiFi now, we can automatically query events and data as it's in stream. This comes in really nice when you want to say you're getting events in, but you only want a subset of them that you want to deal with. Or perhaps you want to route your data, something we could have added to the demo. If it's an even record, send it to Kudu. If it's an odd record, send it to Hive. You know, that's we would just add two SQL queries here to do that. And that would happen in the event stream. Doesn't have to land in a storage place first. And it doesn't matter if it's JSON events, Avro, CSV, XML couple different types there it makes it uh, really nice. You could also do it with something that you can analyze like a log. That comes in handy. Uh, these slides will be available uh, through Apache. I'll also make sure that they're shared through either SlideShare or through GitHub so everyone can get uh, the links to all the articles and all the details if they're interested on how they might want to do this. I've got some details here. Here I pulled from a, a SQL Server database. You list to what the server is. You know, if you've done any kind of JDBC programming, it's going to look really familiar. This will just uh, set up those connection pools for you. You know, you select your record, output it in what format you want. 
you know, and if, if later you want to change it to something else, very easy to do. The uh, query record processor makes that very uh, straightforward. And again, there's a lot of different ways we can easily ingest these database tables. John has come up with uh, what I think is a really awesome way to do that. So let me stop to share here. His demo has two, uh, a really, I think is the cleanest way to do it and seems to be pretty performant. That seems like a, a good paradigm if you want to walk through that uh, demo. Oh, we got our buddy Abdulkrim from Druid here, which is cool. In five minutes, we'll have NiFi connect to Druid. Kafka for him. We do this interactive demo. We'll send it over the pipe through Kafka to him. No pressure. So, um, so what I set up here is, I mean, it's it's pretty simple actually, the overall process. And uh, I decided to use an Oracle uh, database rather than using like Postgres or MySQL, where you see a lot of that online, especially pulling out a data with NiFi. I created a, a, believe it or not, I used NiFi to generate data as well. Um, so I'll, I'll go through that real quick. Um, there is uh, an API uh, where it has random users. So I actually can get a list of people's names. Um, it's pretty cool because it's pretty global. Like you'll see names in English as well as other languages. So you'll, you'll get all of that. I'm just doing a get command from there. Uh, I'm pulling the JSON out. Uh, and storing it as attributes. Um, and then I'm actually using the internal expression language of NiFi, which is pretty cool, right? So I wanna generate a key value. Uh, I wanted to generate um, like a decimal, uh, you know, and essentially I add the, the schema name and also I wanted to get a timestamp, right? So to actually get when the data is being ingested. From here, uh, I essentially then just put this into an Oracle database. Now the Oracle database is just using what's called a database connection pool. If you go into the controller services and I show you this, um, it's pretty easy. I'm not gonna expand it too much because then you're gonna get my entire database name, which I don't want that to happen because the AWS costs would be insane. Um, just using a normal driver, uh, of course, had to download the driver since it's Java 8. Make sure that you're using OJDBC 8.jar. For the newer versions of NiFi, it does support newer versions of Java, so you could utilize those jars as well. And then just the database user and the password. And for those that aren't familiar with NiFi, the, the password actually, even me, the person who put it in, if I go to click on this, it says sensitive value set. It doesn't actually show me what the value is. so. Uh, one of the things that I like about NiFi. So once I start this up, then we have two different ways to kind of push the data downstream, right? So it's important to note that this is not real change data capture because we're not going to the log level, right? What we're doing is, is we're, we're actually just querying the database, but if the data has a timestamp component, we essentially can use that timestamp component. Now, Quick background of, of where I came from. I actually was a, a data engineer for a company called American Water. And one of the things that we had to do was try to get data out of SAP. And it was incredibly expensive to use CDC tools in order to do so. So what we did is we turned to the open source, we turned to Apache NiFi, and we found that there was a way that we could essentially inject the timestamp through the SLT process from you know, the ECC system into uh, the runtime system. And then we could do the SQL off of the runtime instance uh, utilizing that timestamp. And NiFi gives us that capability because there are stateful processors in order to pull the data in. So first I'm gonna actually show <laughs> this in, a, let me make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna show this pushing to Kudu and you're gonna see the Kudu design and the Hive design are a little bit different. This is it. It's literally four, four processors. And actually one of them is just in case there's a failure, I'm routing it to a log message so that I can go in and take a look at it. I could route the failure of the data um, to a file system. So that way I never lose that data. I can come in and take a look and see what exactly happened to it. But in the query database uh, table record, I'm gonna show the configuration. I'm using that same database uh, 
connection pool into Oracle. Uh, I'm allowed to pick the database types. So there's several different database types. Uh, one of them is actually, uh, you know, the Oracle 12 plus. I'm using an Oracle 19C uh, in AWS. Table name, I called it Apache Con. I figured it was, uh, it was fitting. Um, and all I'm doing is just doing a select star from it. And one of the things I like about, um, about NiFi is that the record processors are awesome, right? So I had the data, uh, when I pull it out, I could use a JSON record set writer. So I'm actually writing the data to a JSON format. Um, the max value column is set. So this max value column is called ingest time. Right. It's what I created when I created the Oracle table. So essentially, this is going to store the state and we'll show you that in a minute as well. One important thing to note, a lot of times when you do SQL out of databases, you'll notice that everything will come in as, uh, you know, n bar char or, you know, some sort of character set. So use Avro logical types. It'll actually detect the Avro logical type. If I set this to true out of the box, this is going to come set as false. So as you're going to pull the data, you want to set this as true. And what that'll do is that'll actually map like your integers as integers. One thing that was a little weird is the actual integer map to a float, which is fine. Um, but I'm able to use, um, you know, an Avro schema registry to do that conversion when I go push it into, um, into Kudu. In the same regard, when you look at the configuration, oh, I got a little uh, happy there. I, I'm going to go and view the state and you're going to see that uh, the epoch uh, timestamp is there, right, for the cluster. If I were to clear this state, I would essentially get all of the data that I have in the Oracle database. So it's not something I want to do now. It's it's not a lot. I you know I built this yesterday. I'd say this whole process took about six hours to build everything in the demo, and of of which probably about four of them were just trying to get the Oracle database stood up correctly, and you know all all the different tables set up and everything like that. From here, I'm going to update attribute. All this is is adding a schema name property, and I'm going to put it in a Kudu, right? And so, if you look at the put Kudu processor, um, essentially, you just have the, the Kudu master create the table in Impala, and I'm going to show you the table in Hue as well. And then, like I said, we're using that JSON tree reader. And for those that aren't familiar, right, with uh, readers and writers, so there's if I look at the configuration, it's not not showing. So the readers and the writers, I act, actually can use uh, an external schema. NiFi has its own internal schema, right? So if I come here to um, the controller settings, we'll configure. You'll see this Avro schema registry is up here, right? So NiFi has its own internal schema. Um, but I could use so Hortonworks uh, schema registry, a Cloudera schema registry. Um, you can use uh, a, a lot of different uh, external schema registries, right? So there's there's other ones as well. If I go ahead and start this flow, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this uh, Oracle generator. And you're going to see the data will start flowing in NiFi pretty quick. And that's just constantly flowing in, right? The reads and writes are relatively quick. So doing something like this on... A heavy transactional table, it's not that bad actually. Uh, one thing that I would recommend is probably, you know, don't go against the source system transactional table. Usually, when you go against like you know, larger system databases, you want to push it to a to a copy so that way the transaction system never really gets upset and essentially do that replication from there and then use that to do the pulling. For Hive, it's a little bit different, right? So for Hive, what we did is we set up a, a two-stage process. And this is something very similar to what I did at American Water. If I come in here, you're going to notice that there's a lot more going on, right? Still the same query, uh, the, the query database table record processor. The big difference here is I'm, I'm using um, a conversion from Avro. So like when I when I use the pull here, I'm using an Avro record set writer to make sure that it comes in as Avro. I'm then converting that to ORC format and I'm putting it into HDFS. You're going to notice there's two put HDFS processors, right? And, and so you might be wondering why am I doing that? Well, I'm creating a staging table, right? And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show that this is only going to run, the scheduling of this processor is to run every 60 seconds, so one minute. 
part of the reason why I do that is there's a merge statement into a overarching hive table. Um, but I have this external table right here. So what I wanted to do is, you know, when you do something like this, and this is where we say it's not real CDC, right? It's incremental batch, micro batching. We were able to, with with our our relatively small Hadoop cluster, we were able to use NiFi and then the Hadoop cluster together to, you know, basically get hundreds of thousands of records merging against, um, you know, hundreds of millions, like 600, 700 million records in a matter of five minutes. So we did our incremental batches in 10 minute batches. So that way we don't had, we never had to worry about the merge, um, you know, taking a little bit of time and we didn't have to worry about backup, but you can actually control a lot of the back pressure in the flow as well. But what I wanted to do too, is I wanted to actually store every copy of the data or data change that existed within the table as well. And so this second put HDFS is for me to essentially have a historical table. Uh, important, very important, you know, a lot of uh, enterprises that I've dealt with, they want um, a, basically a copy of the source system in Hadoop, but then they also want a copy of the history, right? So that way they can go back and see how is the change happening? How often is the change happening? What can they do? Maybe there's information in that that they want to use machine learning on. So I, I store that off and, and you see, it's real easy. I, I actually just have the success cues going in both different directions. Once it's in the staging table, um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually just replacing the text and I'm doing a merge statement. I'm gonna make this bigger. Now I wanted to make sure, and I'm glad, so Tim and I were testing this out earlier today. And of course, you know, problems always happen when you test and notice that because I'm waiting a little bit of time, I essentially have multiple records with the same key value that were showing up in the staging table. So a little bit of SQL fixes everything. So my select statement, I essentially make sure that I just get, you know, the one that has the highest uh, time ingest time value, meaning that it's gonna have the highest rank. And so I'm using that as a basis to push that into and merge the data into a base table or, or uh, you know, my hive table. And then that's just using uh, a put hive QL processor. So if you come here, there's just a Hive connection pool. This one, I can show you the connection string because it doesn't really matter. Yeah, for some odd reason, uh, I've got a lot of stuff running on one node. So it's taken a little bit of time. You'll see the UI is lagging a little bit. Um, but all this is using is just the JDBC connection string into Hive. Um, and then using the, you know, the Hive site.xml. So there's, there's, uh, there's XML files that you need, the configuration files within Hive the user exists. So if I come in here to Hue, right, and you'll see, so I have what I call my production table is my ApacheCon underscore Hive table. So all I'm doing is, is I'm doing a select key count star. So what I'm showing you is that essentially I'm ordering it by the count, right, in descending order is that I have no duplicates of data, right, based on that key. If I were to just do a select star from Hive, you'll see what the data looks like. So this is all just made up data, but you'll see, I mean, the generator is actually pretty cool. It's a pretty cool API, right? And I have my value set and I have my ingest time as well. If I were to go ahead and look at the history table, you're gonna see yeah, looks the same, right? Except one of the things is do, 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 do. if I go ahead and do that same, now I have five copies of the same key, five copies of the same key, right? So that random generator that I made, that key using the expression language, I basically said pick a number between one and a thousand. And you're going to see I have multiple values with the same key, right? So primary key. Um, and I made the table as simple as possible, right? It's obviously not very large. It's very easy to do because it, it's, it's quick to build. It's quick to demonstrate the capability. In the same regard, I can switch now to uh, Impala. And I can go ahead and look at the Kudu ApacheCon table. And you'll see, very similar. 
the cool thing about NiFi is that when doing the Kudu piece, the put Kudu processor actually allows you to make it an upsert or an insert, right? So I think this is great. Um, I would love to see that in Hive, you know, so that you don't have to use the, the staging method to the push method. But um, this is this is a, a one of the fantastic things about this put Kudu processor. So I'm, I'm a huge fan. Also, you'll notice that with NiFi, you know, Tim pointed out the registry. I have green check marks here that exist, right? And that's because over here in the registry, I have these buckets, right? So each one of these buckets, uh, come here. Each one of these buckets, I can go in and take a look at the version of the buckets. I actually made the buckets while Tim was talking because I forgot to do it earlier. That's how fast it is to make a bucket and set the processor group for version control. And, and you can see at 1.41 PM is when I, when I made this bucket. So that's pretty much it. Um, Tim, I don't know if you uh, you want to go through some other stuff. Uh, it's a pretty quick demo, but this this works for Oracle. I've done it in production for the largest uh, publicly traded water utility for SAP. Um, easily can do it with Postgres. Easily can do it with uh, you know with with MariaDB uh, or MySQL. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, I was just going to say people could chat, but somebody's been dominating the chat for you. I know, man. This guy can stand. <laughs> I, get, I get bored. <laughs> Whatever that's called. I was just mentioning some of the things related to uh, what we're doing in the meetup tonight, which will have random people talking about random streaming stuff. Or they'll be very interactive. Uh, in what time is it? In 10, 15 minutes, I have another session that's on the Flank stack, which is NiFi, Kafka, Flink, Kudu, and some of the other Apache friends there. It follows uh, some of this and some other use cases for NiFi. If people do have questions, please put them out there. Uh, John will share that. Uh, that flow, we'll put that on a GitHub somewhere. I'm actually gonna write an article. I'm gonna write step by step instructions and that way it's even nice. better, right? How to set it up in AWS, how to how to set up um, how to set up everything. So that way you know it's easier to do. You can step through it yourself. That's very cool. Yeah, this is a, a good way to uh, get started. What seems like a complex use case is is pretty straightforward in NiFi. Someone mentioned Redshift. Really, to switch as Redshift as a source or as Redshift as a sync, it's switching a processor, which is not uh, is not complex. I mean, for uh, John to pick another processor to drop in there, or for me to grab, uh, you know, we want to send it somewhere else. I mean, Kudu is a nice one because of that upsert but we can just push somewhere else. Like if I wanted to push to Redshift or to Oracle or Postgres or MySQL or any uh, JDBC data source, put database record works really well and you don't have to worry about manually converting whatever your data is into SQL, which could be messy or, you know, SQL injection is always something to worry about. Here I just pick a SQL reader, which I don't know if my screen is big enough. So we've got things like Avro, CSV. Grok is cool if you've seen Grok for any of the log tools. Grok is great. You know, parse your stuff. Two different ones for JSON. I usually use JSON tree. We could read Parquet. You could write a little script to parse your data, grab syslog, XML. Those are pretty pretty good set of data there. So say you had uh, the person mentioned Jason. So I have Jason coming in. I want to do you know insert. Then I'm going to have to create a database connection. Uh, we've got a couple uh, options here. One if it's something uh, related to uh, Hadoop or Hive or Hive three, or for just a regular JDBC one, I would just create that 
put in, as you saw John do, he put in some parameters. And it's really, these are the ones you'd use in a Java program. What's the JDBC URL? Where's that class? You know, where'd you put the driver? What's the name of the class? Login. You know, things you'd expect in a database. Nothing uh, too hard here. Put a table name in. What's nice within NiFi, which we didn't mention, is everything scriptable. So I can derive this table with code. So I can look at that file coming in and decide, oh, I know this one. This should go to table five because the that's one of the field names. So you don't have to have this hard coded. This could be uh, you know, passed in and you can manipulate that and it'll automatically figure out you know which field goes where based on that schema or if you don't want to do a schema because maybe your data changes every single time which that'd be painful it probably doesn't we have infer schema that'll figure it out you are usually better off if you can use a schema you know if you have them if, if you don't have them knife i can help you build one uh we generally put them in the JSON style of Avro, very straightforward, supports nulls, those sort of thing. You'd even have complex types, but I don't know if I really think that's a great idea because you could have arrays in there, nested records, and that gets a little complex, but that's something you could do. We got a couple of minutes left. Is there a question there? Yes. They're asking about Kate. I sent him a link to Orange's open source of the NiFi cop. Yeah, Kubernetes have, operator. Yeah, there's a couple of people who have put them out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if there'll ever be an Apache official one, but I, I know uh, the people we work with uh, are building one that's pretty awesome. That does more than just run them. It you know you take your thing out of the registry, put in some parameters, and it'll auto deploy it on uh, Kubernetes in a smart manner with auto scaling. Now, if I support delete and upsert, if your source or sync, if your sync does, we do. So Kudu, we can. Mm -hmm. uh, Phoenix, we can. I can do it in Hive with the SQL command. I mean, that's, that's you're seeing, you're seeing an update, you're seeing upserts. That's, that's where, let me go back here. Yeah, sure, so, sure. yeah. So you're actually in Kudu. It's Kudu is the easiest. Um, it was designed really well. This processor, in the sense that it just has upsert right here, right? So I could just make this an insert or make this an upsert. And in Hive, it's a little different. In Hive, what you do is you actually build your query. I use the replace text to build the query, but that's essentially what I'm doing here. Is I'm doing a, an upsert, right? So a merge where the keys are the same. And what I'm doing is, is I, my historical data, I have multiple copies. I, I kind of showed this if you're a little late. I showed that there were multiple copies of, um, you know, of the same key value, right? With different timestamps and different values associated with it. I'm using just the SQL in order to make sure that when I merge into, uh, you know, what I call production table, that I'm, I'm only taking the latest timestamped value and doing that, but that's essentially what this is. This is an upsert. So if the system can can handle it, NiFi is NiFi is not doing the upsert there. It's it's doing it on the on the system database, right? Whether it be the source or the sync. So yeah, I think the uh, put database record doesn't have it because upserts got standard to JDBC. Mm -hmm. It's kind of specific to certain data stores have that. Some don't. So you might have to use something, one of our things that does raw SQL, like uh, John was doing. Yeah. I think we have a couple minutes left. I you don't want to wait for my own session. <laughs> you wanna you wanna you wanna share anything else or um yeah, let me while we're here since we've got a let couple of minutes. Share. Yeah, sure. Let me see here. Do we have any do we have anything cool to show? Well, the one thing I was gonna show is I have a way to visualize. You could have put that data in a nice visualization, but Hive, yeah. uh, Hugh also has some visualization. I haven't really played with it, but Hugh's a really nice Apache project for doing, you know, queries, but it can also do some basic visualization here. Not a ton of them, but you could do some. So that's something to, to think about. 
is uh, you know how you display your data. Also, Apache Zeppelin is a very underrated project, which has some really nice abilities to do uh, SQL and to do running uh, Spark and Python and R. If you haven't checked out Apache Zeppelin, I, I highly recommend it. Same with Hue. They've also added a bunch of new connectors, which I don't have there yet. One for Flink SQL, one for Phoenix. So those those are pretty uh, exciting because this Tim, is a tool to use. We, we, I, we, I guess we, we glanced over the, the question. Um, uh, basically, can you use it for long running jobs or should we use Kates only to run some small jobs? By, I mean, uh, my opinion could be wrong. Uh, the Kubernetes stuff, the whole point of having Kubernetes is not to have the long running, right? Unless you you don't know what your data looks like, right? Where you need that scalability of resources. But essentially, if you're making long running containers, um, then that means that that's time where those containers aren't available to other jobs to run, right? So the whole point, in my opinion, of Kubernetes is essentially you know, have it run, give it back, have it run, give it back, have it run, give it back. Um, I don't know, Tim, what are your thoughts? Yeah, that's that's generally the idea. We have a, a new way to run this. And even in that one, it's going to be running for as long as the job runs or run on demand when an event comes in. That also brings up something else that might be of interest uh, to them is the NiFi stateless engine which uh, I didn't think to mention. And that will run as event at a time or job at a time. And that works out really nice for running that on Kubernetes or Yarn or Docker. Uh, it really depends on your use case. If you've got data that you're waiting on or you're running, I, I have NiFi running as a web server. Obviously I want that always running. I, I probably want just a standard cluster, you know, whether that's, you know, just Apache and I do it myself or get it from uh, a vendor, that's uh, that's an option. Because if you're always going to be running, uh, you probably want something that's uh, designed for that. If I put it on Kubernetes and run it all the time, I don't get the advantage of reusing those uh, pods, which is nice. But you could do it, and the new version will. I mean, you know, is the long-running job until it doesn't need to run anymore, you know? Maybe if no data shows up for an hour, I shut it down to maybe one node or turn it off and have my operators waiting for some signal to spin it up as long as you're okay with that delay. I mean, the amount of resources and money you save might make it worthwhile. Depends on your use case. Not if it's life critical data though. That's pretty cool. I think we are out of time because it's, 210 Eastern time. All right. And yeah, you I, got another session, so. Yeah, mine's at 215. If people are interested, there'll be more NiFi, and there'll be Kafka and Kudu and as many Apache projects as I could stuff in 40 minutes. How about that? <laughs> Thanks a lot for uh, coming. Thanks again to John for doing all the work. That way I only had to do part of five talks and not six complete talks by myself. When you when you submit a talk to Apache, sometimes they approve more than one. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, if you will uh, post the slides and some and the demos, and probably John will do an article, and we'll make sure that's tagged with Apache Con so people know where to find it. Yeah, definitely. It might take me a few days to to write up the instructions, but it'll be. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. Man. I need yeah. it now. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get on it, man. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for right. coming. Hopefully see you in the next session. And I also got one with a committer for Apache NiFi at 3.35 Eastern time. Is that Pierre? Doing real, yeah, Pierre. Real-time oh. stock uh, ingesting. Very similar to this, but you've got a, a high-level uh, committer there, which will be very nice to ask yeah. questions about. Pierre, Pierre knows his stuff, man. So Pierre is, Pierre is awesome. Yeah, I get smarter staying the next game. It's very nice. So thanks, everybody. Hope to see you in the next session. See you guys.